to the conversation here, get some analysis of what's been happening overseas. His senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, retired lieutenant colonel as well in the United States Army. Um, what's the most important factor, Doug, that you're looking at in this response that we all know is coming to the attack in, in, in Jordan? What has to be accomplished by this president and how might he go about it? I think there's two things we should look at here. The first is, is this going to be quantity or is it going to be quality? Hmm. Is this attack going to be characterized by having a number of attacks, but on the usual suspect of targets, known positions, barracks, uh, weapon stockpiles, things of that nature? Or is this more closely going to resemble the January 2020 attack against Qasem Soleimani and really try to find leadership, whether inside these Iraqi Syrian militias that actually conducted the attack or in the Iranian IRGC that we all suspect was ultimately uh, responsible and directing, or at least indirectly giving aid to those who conducted this attack against our fallen soldiers. You know, it's interesting you bring that up right away because it had one of our regular military analysts on the program earlier in the week, Lieutenant General um, Richard Newton. And he is in the camp, it seems, or expects at least, to see, you know, more of a campaign than the targeted attacks that you were talking about a moment ago. Let's listen to what he had to say. Here's General Newton. What I would expect is, is not just one or two targets being hit. I think you're going to see more of a campaign, like five to ten days' worth of, of attacks, uh, likely from the, most likely from the air with our own drones, but also with our, uh, our, our stealth fighters and other aircraft that we have in, in, in the region. Um, but it's to send beyond just a message. We've got to now reestablish deterrence. Would that do it? Uh, would that reestablish deterrence, that type of a campaign, rather than, as you say, something like the, uh, just the Soleimani attack? I don't think so. I think the, you know, the lesson at least that I took away from our experience in Iraq in the 2003 to 2011 period is you can kill insurgents all day long and, you know, as we used to very, uh, you know, irreverently say, you know, they'll just make more, uh, that there's an endless supply of fighters. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much of an end to the supply of the munitions. Um, so I, I respect his desire to try to restore deterrence, uh, but I don't think a Long's campaign of that uh, sort is going to do it. I think the only way to do it is to find command and control. Although, again, as we saw with the Qasem Soleimani killing in 2020, his replacement at the IRGC Quds Force seems to be doing just fine. So there's hmm. also replacement there. That's interesting as well. Uh, a couple of other things, Doug, before we let you go. And one, this might be more of a domestic political story in a strange way, and we're going to talk about Michigan a lot on the show today. But what did you make of this executive order uh, from President Biden that was issued today? Sanctions on Israelis are authorized to attack Palestinian settlers. So going after the violence in the, in the West Bank, you see um, this is from Tom Friedman, by the way, in, in the New York Times, talking about the establishment of a so-called Biden doctrine. If we don't see such a big, bold doctrine, the crisis in the region is going to to metastasize Friedman rights in ways that will strengthen Iran, isolate Israel, leave America's ability to influence events there uh, for the better in tatters. So as we look towards a so-called Biden doctrine, what about this idea of going after the settle or going after the violence in the West Bank? Is that a domestic political issue that the president's under pressure here? Or do you think it makes sense as well in terms of the geopolitics there? Well, it could. And I think Mr. Friedman is getting a little ahead of ourselves. One executive order does not a doctrine make. So I don't, I'm, I'm going to wait and see what are the <laughs> follow ons here. But certainly domestically, we know the equation. The, the president's policy on the Gaza Israel conflict is very unpopular with both. Um, voters of Arab descent who happen to be concentrated in Michigan right. and with young people. Um, and there's a sizable number of them around the university communities there in Michigan as well. So certainly he is facing some domestic pressures on this doctrine, um, or rather on his policy yes. for the Gaza-Israel conflict. Um, we'll see if one executive order is going to um, put a Band-Aid on this. Yeah, I don't Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.